I am Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of Douglas County Board of Commissioners. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Clearly, our show on DCTV 23 that has the purpose of bringing information to you about county departments, programs, and people. Information is essential to being able to think clearly. Welcome to another episode of Clearly. Today, I'm joined by State Senator Donzella James to talk about the importance of taking action against the COVID-19 virus. It's so special to have you here today, Senator James, and welcome to Thank Douglas you. County. Thank you very much. Senator it's so James, good to be here. Yes. <laughs> Senator James, you had a serious battle, and we're just going to jump right into it with COVID-19. And how are you doing these days? I'm fine. I'm so blessed that, uh, but I did have a terrible journey that I went through and saw people dying all around me every day. For four months, I was in the hospital with COVID. But I started the session and we were taking the, the, the uh, uh, test twice a week on Mondays and on Thursdays. So we did it all the way until January 20th. Then all of a sudden, on the 21st, I got a call saying, don't come back for 15 days because your test was positive. Mm -hmm. I said, oh no, I'm fine. I'm just catching a cold. I have hoarseness all the time. And then at that point, the next, I called the doctor and before I could get to my appointment the next day, I was down under. It wow. hit me like a ton of bricks. It's real. Please know that this is not something that somebody made up. People are dying. Yes. I've lost so many friends and I'm just so blessed that I didn't go on the ventilator even though they tried to put me on it three times. But last year, my sister died and she had a cough. She was in Nashville and we were talking to her. She wasn't sick other than that. She was more healthy than I've ever been. And she didn't wake up the next morning after I talked to her to midnight one night. Yes. So when they did the autopsy, they said respiratory difficulties. And it was in March of 2021. So I was, uh, I mean, uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my God, wow. what in the world this, this happened to her? She didn't have respiratory problems. Mm. And then we found out it was COVID. COVID took her life and uh, so many other people. So yeah. it's been it's been a rough journey, but uh, once I got in the hospital and got the prayers of all of my friends and the pastors and my colleagues in the House and Senate, mm -hmm. uh, they just could, we just continue and I prayed mm -hmm. and asked God to to uh, heal me. Right. Uh, and and I tell you. I don't know what did it, but I think the prayers of the righteous avail of much. So either way, it was a combination of all of those things. And praise God, uh, two and a half months after I was in the hospital, not, couldn't move, mm -hmm. my, my muscles wouldn't move. I had just had double knee replacement, yeah. and I was doing well and was walking without a cane. Then all of a sudden, I reverted. I couldn't even get out of the bed. Wow. So it's, it's, it was tough. And so I want everybody to know that we must be safe, especially now with the new Delta variant out. Yes. The variant is uh, aggressive, and it's just touching all of the children, so many children who go without masks. Now, Will masks save you? No. 
but it will protect you. Yes. And so why not take a minute and put on a mask? I encourage everyone to mask up, to make sure that they use all precautions, uh, wash your hands, sanitize, sanitize, and social distance like we're doing right now. Yes. And we're masking. Mm -hmm. I keep pulling this so that you can hear me. Yes. Well, you certainly alluded to the power of prayer. Power, the power of prayer is amazing. Uh, we have seen so much happen during the last 17 months. This definitely has been a marathon. Our hospitals today again are full. Uh, our, our Wellstar Douglas uh, received a report this morning that it's full. Um, our positivity rate is up again as a result of the Delta variant. And it seems like as soon as we get one one of the viruses seem like similar to under control, then something else uh, evolves. So that's uh, very true. So it's just. Um, I had double believe... pneumonia in both of my lungs. Oh, wow. and it lingered and, for wow. months, and that was what was the cause of my serious problems and blood clots and things that you would think I, I don't have that. I'll never have that. Oh. Wow. It came from nowhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, people, I, I was the, probably one of the most cautious people at the Capitol. And I was giving out boxes of masks every day and, and, uh, and I social that. distancing mm -hmm. and sanitizing and giving bottles of sanit. Here, here, get one out the basket, you know, all day. And then, like I said, for three weeks in a row, I was fine. And then the second test of that third week, so I don't know where I caught it. It was airborne, maybe, I don't know. Or I was going nowhere else but the Capitol. Yes. But I don't know where I caught it. But people were everywhere. So. Well, uh, I certainly remember we had an opportunity to come visit you when you were in the hospital, but we could only talk from the window. But just to see your smiling, beautiful face, I know hopefully it made you uh, happy to see myself and the mayor, Mayor Robinson. We it stopped it, so, so we good. had so much it fun. So, it was such a wonderful thing to see. Thank you for visiting me. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, the thing that's worse than having the ailment itself mm -hmm. and the virus is not being able to see your loved one. Absolutely. I couldn't see my son, my mother, my friends, my colleagues. Yes. And it was not until I got from the hospital into the Douglas nursing home. And I stayed there for almost two months. And it was not until the end that, thank goodness I got that suite on the bottom floor and it had a big window. And thank you for coming and waving at me at the window. <laughs> thank you for all the kindness and the prayers and the, and the fruit and everything. Thank you very much. You certainly are an amazing uh, leader and also a great senator for Douglas County, which is District 35, and we're so honored. And I know the public is and our residents here are just excited to see you sitting here chatting with me. Uh, and I said I wanted this moment to bring you onto my show to show the citizens, number one, that COVID is real, and you have a testimony, and God can work miracles. And we know, so you are definitely a miracle sitting here. And it's such an honor and just glad to see you up and about again and moving around. But uh, I don't know, uh, it takes time, but it just thank you for sharing your story with us. You know what, let's segue a little bit into District 35. Can I shift a little bit? I mean, you shared and we about your testimony and this is nothing but God's work. It, it's the Lord's doing mm -hmm. that you're here. But we're gonna move a little bit to the state capitol. Okay. Since you have, you're back and up and on your feet again. I know you missed the session this past uh, year. But of course, your work is never done. You know, Senator's work mm -hmm. is never done. You're on, and you were working from the bed, to, to be honest, when you were in the hospital. I actually passed legislation. From the bed. From the bed. Yes. Yeah, I, I have a good staff. Also, I had introduced legislation already. And I had people to sign on to it. And they were able to move the legislation through. Wow. So uh, I was not just laying there feeling sorry for myself. I was laying there praying and, and trying to get better and 
making myself move, but also getting on the phone or on the on the iPad or the telephone and just calling people or texting them and emailing them. And I, I just stayed very busy. And we were able to do some great things. Mm -hmm. And name us the name part of a street after Hank Aaron because he passed away oh, yes. while I was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, there were three or four other major bills that we worked on for a long time, and it went through. And some of the bills that I introduced in the past on human trafficking was picked up by uh, the governor's wife. You know, she yes. uh, took that issue on. Mm -hmm. And I have been working for years and years to change things and to stop human trafficking. Yes. So some of the bills that were difficult to pass, she looked at them, that committee looked at them, and they changed it and they passed it. Wow. So I'm very, very just pleased. As, as no pride or ownership, I don't care about who gets credit, credit for anything because that's not the point. It's about saving our children. Yes, the human trafficking I know people. has been part of your agenda for quite a while and to see legislation move so quickly mm -hmm. with the support of the governor's wife. I know you're thrilled. Uh, a little bit about, since you're out and about and your constituents, I know they're, and, and, and just your loved ones, all of us just been loving on you. Can you tell us what's coming down the pike or what, what you think is coming down in terms of reapportionment and things like that? I know you've been involved. Can you talk about that a little bit? Senator? Totally involved. <laughs> uh, most people don't know, but every uh, 10 years we have a census and the year after the census when the reports come in the legislature has to redraw the lines yes. according to the population shifts and Douglas County had almost doubled its numbers in, in the past 10 years you have really grown yes <laughs> and, and it's just been wonderful in businesses Yes. In uh, in neighborhoods and neighborhood associations, and and uh, I mean it's in popularity. Yes, everybody wants to come to Douglas <laughs> County. Douglas oh, County. Yes, yes. And uh, and you know what? That's because of good leadership. Thank you. So Senator. I thank you for your leadership. Thank you. And Senator. and the whole team. Yes. And the mayor of Douglasville, and other cities. I mean, you're really working hard. Yes. And you make it look easy, <laughs> but I know it's not. Well, we learn from the best. That's you. Thank you. The hardest working woman in show business. <laughs> and I, I'm just honored to be, as you call me, your little sister. So I've learned a lot. It's, she said, your work is never done. And when you can serve the population and the citizens, it is rewarding, but at the same time, it's something that is needed. So it's not about politics, it's about the people. So thank you so much, Senator, for always advocating that. I want to shift gears a little bit. You know, my background is healthcare. I retired from healthcare in 2016, and I had the honor of you being there with yes, me to see all the surgeons and nurses crying, saying I that know. it was over. And certainly you put a resolution before the state and resolved my term, my 40-year term in healthcare. But I, so I thank you for that. But I was going to ask you, um, the vaccine. Do you have any neg? Did you have have you taken the vaccine? First of all, they gave. They said my antibodies since I had it for six months. Mm -hmm. My antibodies had built up. Mm -hmm. They would not let me take it immediately. Yes. So then they told me I'm eligible for the booster shot. So I'm scheduled yeah. to for get the, that for the booster. Uh huh. In fact, it might be even tomorrow. Wow. But they told me I really didn't need that either. They took another test last week and Monday to, to give me a clean bill of health. Oh, uh, and, but they said that, you know, since you don't know how long the antibodies last, mm -hmm. they uh, recommended that I, since it's been well past 90 days now, I can finally have any of the shots that I want to have. Oh. Oh, or I can have the booster shot. Very so I'm getting good. the booster shot. Very, very That's good. brand new. It, it is. Mm -hmm. And I believe the FDA just released it. They just think. released it last week. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and everybody won't be able to 
uh, receive it, they won't be eligible mm -hmm. at first. Maybe they will increase it mm -hmm. because they're even looking at some of the people who've been vaccinated uh, their second time and still is not a strong enough protection. Yes. So some of the people will still have to be candidates for the booster. But right now, I hope everybody yes. gets a, a vaccination. Okay. We, we just need to stop this. Yes. I said, I can't bring the people back that I heard when I was in my bed in the hospital, cold blue, cold blue. And people yeah. running down the hall and then you would see a, a, a bed, a cock pass with a sheet over a person. You knew. And I was on the floor with only COVID, COVID patients. Yes. So, and they were not just adults. Yeah. So it didn't just start happening to children because many of those young people were children yes. that passed away a few months ago, earlier this year. It was in Jan. Thank goodness it's, I'm, I'm long over it now. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, I want it to stay that way. Yes. Uh, we were having a meeting at the Capitol. That's what I'm doing now is working on the American Rescue uh, Act, Plan Act. Yes. And that's the $1.9 trillion yes. that uh, the federal government, uh, Biden, uh, signed into law and it will go to all of the states. Mm -hmm. Georgia will get $17.4 billion. Yes. And we have to spend it by December 31st of 2025. Okay. Other monies will are available too out of that uh, 1.9 trillion. And it will be for grants, for uh, different projects, mm -hmm. for anything that uh, is COVID related that uh, where people lost money or education was lost during that time. So mm -hmm. our educational uh, departments need to get, they're getting money. Yes. All of the counties and the cities yes. are getting money. But who's calculating how, who's getting it? My whole thing was I had a hearing from my committee. I'm the chairperson of Interstate Corporation. Yes. I wanted to make sure, sure that Douglas County and Fulton, that I represent, gets your fair share of the tax, that, that money. That's your taxes. Yes. That's okay. the money that's, that's you've been paying into the system. And now that we've Thank lost mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. and we're so behind uh, and we're trying to rebuild, we need help. And I, I want to see the um, foreclosures get some of the money and the rental programs get money as well. So uh, anyone who's eligible for this money can go to the governor's um, website mm -hmm. for the state of Georgia, go to Governor Kemp's website, and go to American Rescue Plan Act, and get an application. Fill it out and send it in ASAP. Okay. And, and, uh, and that, you know, you as a, a county and all the cities are able to get money, but you still need more money. Absolutely. Thank goodness the infrastructure bill passed too. Yes. And so you'll be getting money there. Absolutely. But you Excited. need, you need, um, you have yes. different projects that you had to let go. Mm -hmm. they, maybe now they were so needed. Maybe now the worthy ones need to uh, be reimbursed through this uh, ARPA is what they're calling it. Yeah, the ARPA plan. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is the closest we will ever see to a Great Depression. Mm -hmm. And if it was not for the federal government and, of course, the state providing for the local governments and the municipalities, we would be upside down. Mm -hmm. So it is just a, a blessing to be here and to just see what God can do in the midst of travesty. Because, um, you know, this is the first time in history that this has happened in the United States. Yes, absolutely. And so this money, nobody knows what to do with it. Mm -hmm. They had some monies that came from another grant that was right before this one. Mm -hmm. But this stimulus package yeah. is just for COVID. Yes. And we want to make sure that that money, it's an executive order 
that went with that mm -hmm. and said underserved communities yeah, underserved. should get that money and not be discriminated against, as well as people of color. Mm -hmm. So I haven't heard very much talk about that executive order. Yes. And so we, we need to look at, when you Google, Google it too. Okay. I, I think 13940, I think it's five, five numbers. Okay. I I'm I'm uh I should should know that by <laughs> heart. I've I've yeah. had three hearings uh -huh. you since have? I've been back. Okay. And we have another one November twentieth, which is this week, and we have uh, the chambers of commerce, the Black chambers of commerce, the uh, Latino chamber of commerce. All of them mm -hmm. are interested in this money. Yes. Okay. And they are uh, and then we have nonprofits. USA Gym, that's those little the the that's in East Point, Georgia, I think. But they take people from all over Georgia and they teach our kids gymnastics and tumbling. Uh -huh. And you see them at the uh, halftime shows of of um, the Hawks and the Falcons or whatever. But they had to stop. They had to close shut down. Yeah, this virus. So, yeah, and uh -huh. they couldn't. The kids couldn't touch each other. And so now they brought new equipment and they tried to social distance and new padding and covering to go over the pads that they tumble on, mm -hmm. but they need the money. So maybe they will get some of the ARPA money so they can continue to keep our kids healthy and energized and, and uh, Olympic ready, okay? <laughs> yes. You know what, Senator, you also lead another committee, the state, and it is the mental health, behavioral health side. Can you just talk about that a little bit? And certainly I would love to see some more funding allocated for mental health, particularly during this uh, pandemic, because you know, the fallout will be mental illness. Can you speak to what's oh, yes. happening on the state level? Yes. Well, the monies that I've been talking about are eligible for some of those programs. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to get even more money on the state level but we will have to wait to January when the session starts again. We have a special session in November, and it'll just be for reapportionment. And I heard the governor say that he wants to put a few more things on it, but it'll be as per his decision. Mm -hmm. What else we would look at, some of the major issues that he thinks we should look at. But mental health should be among them. Because uh, mm -hmm. during the pandemic, when the schools closed, the kids who were in special education, mm -hmm. they got the same uh, instructions that the other students got, but they needed more help. Mm -hmm. But they didn't get the help. They, they didn't it. have it. And it's so many of the uh, therapists and the specialists in that area who had to take on other jobs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of the pandemic and with adults getting this, mm -hmm. and so and and people who are not mentally challenged, so they yeah. didn't even, you know, they go where the money. And they, you know. <laughs> yes, they and it's a shortage. It's it, a shortage it's of, a of help uh, in health care, and in in almost everything in the workforce, but definitely for mental health. Mm -hmm. So we need more money. I'm an advocate. I'm going to fight, fight, fight. To okay. get more money in the budget. Thank you. I, I'm open to hear any programs you think. One program that I fought for was uh, FODAC. Yes. And FODAC, FODAC uh, gives the scooters and the wheelchairs and the diapers or whatever to the nursing homes. And, mm -hmm. But they give that to people who are indigent or to governments like downstairs coming in. You could have a scooter in case you had a person that couldn't walk up and down or go in the courtrooms and they could check it out there and then check it back in when they're leaving. Mm -hmm. And the, the wheelchairs as well, and electric wheelchairs from FODAC. Well, they got behind too. They even give, um, uh, what is it, milk for pregnant mothers? Yes. Mm -hmm. They give the... Um, is it WIC? Wick. Yeah, yeah, Wick. yeah, they mm -hmm. they have something that supplements Wick. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. and yeah, because that that program still works. Okay. 
and uh, and they give uh, other things, even uh, people who are homeless. Mm -hmm. They help them, especially the mentally ill, and they might get some kind of housing, but they don't have anywhere to sleep. So they'll give them a bed and a mattress, mm -hmm. and maybe a, a chest. So they they're really doing things. We, we donate, mm -hmm. and so people have not been donating as much during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. People have not been working. That's true. And people don't even want to work now. They've been home with their children, <laughs> and they see a new world. They want to <laughs> yeah. stay at home. Yeah. So when I give my living testimony, I want to say I'm one of them. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what, I'm like you. You work, work, work all the time. You're always going somewhere, doing something, sitting in a meeting, listening to people and feeling their pain and trying to do something about it. Well, I try to, I'm, I'm, I'm like that too. And if, I, if we weren't like that, what would we do? We wouldn't know what to do with ourselves. We wouldn't know what to do. So. Senator, I certainly have a deep love for Douglas County and all of our residents and I made it very apparent, not well, before the pandemic, but this has been up close and personal. And I poured my heart out and said, please consider wearing masks. Please consider the vaccine because I love you and the Board of Commissioners love you and, and all of us love each other because it takes all of us to get this thing under control and to mitigate this virus. If you had some encouraging words to say to Douglas County residents, how would you frame that um, in terms of considering the vaccine? You know, certainly uh, encouraging the vaccine. Tell me, just mm -hmm. if you could just just shout out something to the citizens of this amazing, beautiful God country, God's country county. It's God's country, that's right. Well, I, I want to say that don't take this pandemic and this virus for granted. It's real. Please take a minute to talk to whomever and get educated on the vaccinations. If you have a problem with it and it's not physical and it's not anything health-wise, then please consider it. Yeah. Please get vaccinated. Even if it's not just for you, for your family, for your friends. We don't want to keep going to funerals. Yeah. We want to go to celebrations. Absolutely. A celebration that is that is is done. Mm -hmm. So I've been in the fight of my life, and I think that I've had a knockout punch mm -hmm. against the COVID. I don't want it again. Who knows what could happen? Yes. So I'm I want to be safe. So people who are around me, I want them to mask up and I want them to be vaccinated so that they can save themselves for themselves and for their children. Well, Senator, thank you for those kind words to our citizens. And I hope they heard you loud and clear because I am echoing your voice. A lot of folks, uh, should I say, a lot of uh, people don't know about your background. You were an air traffic controller. Thank you for controlling the airways. And also you were an educator. So that's gonna lead into my next question about education. You know, right now our babies are returning to school or they have returned. Can you just talk a little bit about your stance on education in the COVID uh, environment? And I know there's so many layers and we try to step lightly because, you know, everybody has an opinion for every yes, there is a no. Didn't realize that a pandemic would be so political, but I always say there's no room for politics in a pandemic. That's Can you true. talk about our school environment? Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm proud of Douglas County school system. Thank I you. wish all of them could be like Douglas County. But, you know, it's always room for improvement, even when it's great. Yes. And I am on the Education Committee for the State Senate. Yes. And I have been for many years. And I asked for this committee because my mother and father both taught with Atlanta Public Schools for more than 40 years. And they were, became principals and they retired. Mm -hmm. Then I went there for 11 years. So uh, Atlanta Public Schools uh, is not for everybody, mm -hmm. but I worked very hard to teach kids. And now those kids still come to me and say, you were the best teacher I ever had. Thank you for directing <laughs> my life. Yes. 
we, we need to, first of all, pay our teachers a decent salary, and we want to attract quality teachers and retain them, mm -hmm. and this would do that. Yeah. And then we need to make sure that we don't have violence in the schools, like we've had too much violence in the schools. So we need to protect the teachers and the children. I've done things to protect the teachers that nobody would even really think about. For example, the special education kids, some of them have to take medication. Mm -hmm. And Ritalin. Yeah. Ritalin was something that was making the kids walk around like zombies. And they were selling it. Some of them were faking, taking it, and they would sell it to their friends right. because it was a stimulant. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and that that made the teacher responsible because the, the parent sends it to school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had to stop that. Okay. And so they take it at home or they have to have a nurse there or the principal will have it if it's life and death. So, you know, little things we need to do in the educational system, but we definitely need to go back to learning again. Mm -hmm. Education is something that no one can ever take from you. Yeah. And you know and I know because we both just stayed in there until we got PhDs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, it doesn't matter whether your subject and verb agree to serve sometimes. But if you learn and at least get a high school diploma, mm -hmm. then you can move forward and get into a vocation or get a GED and get into a vocation. Because there are vocational jobs right now. The mm -hmm. workforce is out there. And so our educational department here in Georgia, in the Douglas County, is doing a good job in training so many uh, people for different professions. And uh, some of the businesses are working with them. They're being apprentices, so they own the job training. They're doing the DECA programs, you know, where they're in high school and then they leave and they get credit for working too. And yes. the teachers get them that job and stay and have to follow them to, you know, to give them work ethics, mm -hmm. to make sure they get the work on time and they work hard. And so, uh, you know, education. Particularly in the pandemic has been. Has been terrible <laughs> in the pandemic. Yes. A lot of the um, young people uh, could not learn by themselves on a computer. Yes. A lot of the parents and guardians could not teach them. And the children knew more than they did. But it was, a, it was interesting. But then now they have a choice. Those who work well alone at home mm -hmm. have a choice in some counties. And they can stay there at home and continue to learn that way virtually until all of this is over. And then on the other hand, those who need that help can go before a real teacher and can get that one-on-one -on -one that they need so badly. So we need to strengthen our educational uh, programs again. Higher education is in trouble too. Mm -hmm. Colleges um, are talking about consolidating with others or closing doors. Mm. And, and it's a lot of people do it online mm -hmm. because they want to work at home yes. and don't get the whole benefit. I mean, not to criticize because I did some online studies too. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, it was for convenience and mm -hmm. also because I was trying to raise my children oh, yeah. and I wanted to continue my education. But if you have the opportunity mm -hmm. to go to a campus for higher learning and go to professors and, go, and be around others who are learning the same thing, they learn so much better. Yeah, and then they get better jobs. Yes. They know, and, and some people learn and get the degrees and then they can't get along with anyone. You, I know you've, you've faced that plenty of times, <laughs> being a supervisor over nurses and other people. You know, uh, as my grandmama used to say, it's not your aptitude 
that determines your altitude is your attitude. Uh -huh. If your attitude is bad, if you've got a bad personality, and you are, are you think you're, uh, what, I hate to say what the kids say, all that in a bag of chips. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you think all of that about yourself, and it's good to have confidence in yourself, uh -huh. but get along with everybody else. That's right. And you don't own the job. You don't own the building. You don't own the roads you're driving on. Yeah. All this road rage. You share. Yeah. And so we have to teach our children the best thing to do. I love the word share. And I believe this has been a awakening moment for not only Douglas County, but just across the globe, period. Even, you know, particularly the United States, we are bonding as one. Uh, I can just touch on some of the points before closing. We have 200 and probably about two, close to 290 residents that have uh, died. And certainly I want to mm -hmm. uh, express condolences to the family members mm -hmm. and, and also honor our deceased. And then we have over 10,000 of our 144,000 citizens that have tested positive for COVID-19. And then of course we had a uh, litany of uh, residents that have been hospitalized, but uh, certainly with the grace of God, they were released and and we have t uh, our own testimony in our department, Mr. Rick Martin, our communications director, and we're just so honored that he's with us. I said, oh, God yes, is so, so amazing. Glad. So, Senator, this has been a 17 month uh, journey. Uh, we will never forget this one. Uh, certainly God chooses his, uh, his flock and when he wants us to experience something, I can say Douglas County has been a resilient county. Uh, they, the, seated my expectations by all means. They have been disciplined. Uh, they've listened, uh, you know, and I, we haven't, the, the government, and I say that, but Board of Commissioners and I, we decided to just teach through education. And that's why I had you just speak so highly about education. So we said, the more we give you in terms of education, we should thrive. And, and, and we, we figured that would help them understand how to take care of themselves because it's, it's very difficult to teach behavior, particularly healthcare behavior and mask on your face. And this is what I've done all my life is a mask. And you know, that was my 40 year career. So I was almost back at home with this mask, but you have to teach others to do. And I, I can say that Douglas County has really, really, the residents, I'm in love with them as always. I said, they have just set the standard in terms of this virus. Um, certainly- I just say that education is it's education the, is key. It's something that nobody can ever take from you. Right. So once you earn it and you get educated, right, then you can use it for the better good for for all, for yourself and for everyone around you. And you see things differently. I try to teach my grandsons, my two grandsons, that very uh, notion that learn all you can. Yes. And in the job that you and I both have, mm -hmm. people come to us and we have to vote on things that, have, that cover every topic. Yes. And are we supposed to be PhDs in everything? <laughs> you know? But, but if you have education, you have learned, you have read about it, then you can stop, look, listen, and learn even more and listen to what's going on. Yes. So I tell my kids, no, you don't, you don't, you don't have to be a know-it-all and know everything, but you have to learn how to listen yes. and then make good decisions oh, and use God. common sense too. Yes. <laughs> well, Senator James, it has been amazing. Just number one, seeing you here, you Thank are, you. I mean, vibrant and yourself who's always energetic. I'm, telling you, when I see you, I say, I don't know where she gets all this wonderful energy from. So I, I, I glean from your energy. So it gives me the vitamins I need to keep going daily. So we appreciate you. You have been doing this a long time. This is, you are not a novice at this game. And I learned from you and you're the best. You're, you know, my mentor. And it's an honor to have you here today. Any closing remarks you want to say before I close out? But again, thank you for sharing your testimony and your story about your, uh, your experience with COVID-19. And I'm hoping that someone in our um, Douglas County, our wonderful county, have heard you today and, 
uh, they will become encouraged and committed to taking care of their health even more. If they have not um, received the vaccine, maybe they would consider it. And then if they choose not to, either whether you vaccinated or unvaccinated, I am encouraging the citizens of Douglas County to wear your mask during this de Delta variant. Senator James, any closing remarks before I close out? Um, I just want to encourage everyone also to please get vaccinated. Please do everything you can to use every precaution against catching any more of this virus and seeing an end to it one day. Um, and also, you talked about me being a leader and uh, you can't be a good leader without being a good follower. Yes. And so I learned a long time ago how to follow. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I follow you and <laughs> other leaders around. So, you know, it's no big eyes and little U's when we all get together. We all work together and talk together, put our hands together. What is, what is it said? Two heads are better than one. <laughs> so we Absolutely. all always make sure that we do that. So thank you for your leadership. Thank you so And much I'm so that. glad that I survive COVID, but also that Rick Martin on your team also survived it. He was yes. an inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, when I read his story, I said, oh yes, we, we all have to have a little uh, mutual admiration club when it comes to those of us who, who have uh, had a chance to overcome it. Hey, overcome, I like that. You and Rick Martin are overcomers. Overcomers. I love it. <laughs> and God is not done with you all yet. Thank you. Well, Senator James, thank you so much for coming in today. The citizens of Douglas County and the Board of Commissioners will benefit from this show. And I thank you for just imparting all your knowledge today uh, upon us. And thank you for helping me get the word out about this virus, uh, the Delta var variant and also COVID-19, and I understand Lambda is behind the Delta. Thank mm -hmm. you for just your commitment and your dedication to just helping myself and the Douglas County Board of Commissioners plead to our citizens that this virus is real, and if we take it lightly, it will take us. And we're just hoping that everybody just, all, everybody's in lockstep, one band, one sound, and we will change this thing once again. This too shall pass. And that's what I always said, this too shall pass. And we thank you for being here today. So thank you, Senator. It's an honor and privilege. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Love you guys. All <laughs> right, thank you.